Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. Uh, I want to give a little preface, preface explanation to the slides before I begin. Um, they have nothing to do with what I'm talking about, except that I'm teasing and sharing with you all stills from uh, a development uh, shoot that we did for the film that we're working on, me and David, who are here, the documentary called Totality. Um, so I'm teasing as I move through what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm just going to bring you through some of our work. Um, you are the film's community to a certain extent, a, a small portion of it, um, but an important portion. And so I'm, I wanted to draw you in and share some of the stuff we've been doing so far. And um, so that's what's going to be happening here. It might be a little distracting, but hopefully fun for you all to see what we're doing. Okay, great. So I want to start by offering a reframe. What if the eclipse is a starting line? And all we're doing to prepare our families, our businesses, and our communities for this event is a setup for something in us to say, go. All this work you're doing is for more than just a moment. We're working towards the emergence of something new in ourselves and in our communities that wants to be born. My name is Harrison Neer. I'm a creative producer, a filmmaker, and a songwriter interested in the power of stories to catalyze human connection, both in community with other humans and with non-human life and spirit. What brings me here today is my role as a researcher and associate producer working with Cue Ball Productions and Sandbox Films in the making of a film we're calling Totality. You might be able to guess what the film is about. As I begin, here we're back in the same situation. This way. There we go. I want to make it clear that unlike the esteemed folks who I'm sharing this podium with, I'm no expert on the topic of eclipses. 2024 will be my first total eclipse. Why I'm up here is because, like many of you, I've been tasked to think creatively about a problematic question. After the 2024 eclipse is over, what then? How do you create continuity in relationship to the eclipse experience and sustain or even expand the sense of community we've all gained in anticipation of the event? This is the question I want to take up in conversation with you, the question of continuity. My intention with this talk is to leave you inspired to create continuity based on the experience you've achieved for yourself and for your community around the coming total eclipse. I also hope to get you clear on how to take the first steps or recognize the steps you've already taken towards a vision for sustained engagement that centers your unique contributions. So let me take it back to the work I've been doing in preparation for April 8th. Click. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're also screenshots, so I, I didn't get the highest quality images, so they'll be much nicer on the film. In March, I began conducting research and outreach on behalf of Totality. Essentially, my role has been to map the content, continent a la Michael Zeiler, except I'm drawing paths of potential constituents in their stories through which we could weave a greater narrative that with some craftsmanship will become the film. To date, I've talked to hundreds of people from organizers to umbrophiles, educators to NASA scientists, journalists to government officials, many of who are here, uh, all distinctly and often intensely invested in this event. What I've come to understand from these conversations beyond how to view an eclipse safely or the real purpose of a giant blow up sun, shout out to Dan Schneiderman in Rochester, is the power of an eclipse to call us back to our creativity in service of others. Click. Have you noticed that a to total solar eclipse is really good at getting adult human beings to drastically change their lives mm -hmm. or to innovate in service of others often on their own time and dime? Have you noticed that? From a plastic surgeon who has written a 500 page book on eclipse photography to a, a media marketing CEO who is actively co-chairing the AAS Eclipse Task Force, task force to a risk-taking producer broadcasting eclipse from remote locations like undeveloped islands in Micronesia and illegal locations in Western China. I've talked to so many people who have, Tyler, I've talked to so many people who have returned to or begun living an unconventional creative life upon joining the eclipse cause. And as we know, sometimes we don't choose this path. Sometimes the path that the eclipse comes directly over your home, your city, your town, and suddenly you're involved and invested in this thing you may have never even thought of before. Um, that's the way an eclipse can act as a, the way an eclipse can act as a catalyst for human innovation and creativity has become a driving fascination for me. And I believe it will have a great influence on our film. Furthermore, I think that, the, this, uh, that understanding the catalytic potentiality may hold the key to creating continuity in your community's eclipse experience as well. So what if we saw the eclipse as a starting line? Not necessarily for ourselves who are already invested and involved, but for everyone else who we've succeeded in safely ushering under the umbra. 
With that many geniuses inspired, what could we accomplish? I want you to take some time now and over this weekend to try on this reframed purpose. How can you provide opportunities, not only leading up to the event, but especially afterwards for inspired souls to offer their unique creativity in service of sustained experiences? This means leaving your channels open and having a system of communication available throughout the days and months after the, after the event that will allow people to connect, relate, and share their work. Yes, we're all gonna be very tired on April 9th, but it's important that we see that next season as a deeply valuable time, which requires infrastructure and communications alongside rest and rejuvenation. I wanna shout out Robin Higdon, especially from the San Francisco Exploratorium for making this point very clear to me. As an example of what this could look like with totality, we're setting up a crowdsourcing component, drawing inspiration from 2017 prede predecessors like the Eclipse Mega Movie and Citizen Kate, now the Deb Initiative. We're gonna create a call for student, amateur and professional filmmakers along the path to submit a few minutes of footage from their Eclipse experience. This footage will be used to construct a kaleidoscopic intercut collage that will serve as the film's cinematic climax. In this way, we're setting up a path for inspired creativity to take root at totality and then as the film takes off to nourish that community with communications, behind the scenes insights, on-screen credit, perhaps opportunities to screen the film and more to be decided. By providing an outlet or pathway to direct the inspiration ignited by the total eclipse, we can catalyze community around the film and create a sense of continuity that can run for years beyond the event and in its path, hopefully inspire the next generation that will prepare Americans for the 2045 event. So if filmmaking is your creative outlet, I want to invite you to participate by going to totalityfilm.com and filling out our filmmaker interest form. Now, the, the website hasn't launched yet, but it will launch in the next few weeks. Uh, if not, if filmmaking is not your creative outlet, I want to invite you to think about your own authentic creative outlet. How do you want to channel the energy from the eclipse into your life and outward? Once you have an answer, start to talk about it with others because this continuity, it requires community. It requires accountability to others. It requires support. So create channels for your community to come to you after the eclipse, to present ideas or offer feedback, and to develop a communally driven path towards the innovation you want to create or the story you want to tell. This is how we all can move from totality through, through community to continuity. Thanks very much. Oh, I missed this one. Uh, more in Rochester. And there's one.